Now we've sung songs down here. Yes, I got a blessing yeah. with my name on it. Oh, we're saying it. But, but then you get to heaven, you're going to be surprised. And God going, you, you're going to see this big gift. And you say, God, my name is on that gift. Why didn't you give it to me when I was on earth? And he'll say to you, you've had, never had enough faith uh, to ask for it. Perhaps he'll go on to say that you never understood that I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask for me. Notice he says, now unto him. Remember, it's a pyramid. That's why I got to keep going back to that. So he says, now unto him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Mm -hmm. And what he's simply saying is that when God responds to your prayers, God can take what we ask and enlarge it and make it bigger. Yeah. God takes what you think scrubs out your requests, vetoes and overrules your requests, then he's able to provide something far more than what you ever thought of. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. because we think in the here and now. Yeah, yeah. But God thinks in the then and there. Yeah. When you're complaining about this problem, uh, you have to deal with it in the now. Yeah. But God is already down the road. Okay. He's working on your problem in the not yet. Right. Mm -hmm. You work on it in the now. Yeah. God works on it in the not yet. And when you get your now up to God's not yet, he's already got your problem in the no longer. The reason he does is because he's able. You want to leave here knowing that. Anybody believe he's able? I'm talking about he's able to deal with the very thing that brought you into this room today. You say, well, Lord, why are you not dealing with it? One of the things you need to be careful to understand is that although we have an inexhaustible power available to us, the power can only be released in us and through us as we are submitted to his will. Yeah. So it could be the reason why God hadn't done anything about it is because you're still bumping your head against the wall of God's will. Right. You're pushing his hand out of the way while trying to handle it on your own, and now you've created a mess of your own. Okay. Could be that God's trying to get you to go right, and you're determined to go left. He's trying to get you to go up, and you are bent on going down. Mm -hmm. You remember when Paul was trying to go there to Asia, and the Lord hindered him. He heard a message from Macedonia and said, come over here and help us. Mm -hmm. And Paul always talked about how much he wanted to go to Rome. He said, yet the Lord hindered or prevented him at that time. The Lord instead allowed Paul at that time uh, to go to Rome at a later time. Uh, but in the meantime, he was put in prison at Caesarea Philippi. Yeah. And later on, when he went to Rome, when he got there, he wasn't able to do what he thought he could do mm -hmm. and ended up in a Roman jail. All right. But now let's look at what God does and how he does exceedingly abundantly above all we ask. Yeah. Paul wanted to go to Rome. But he had to write a letter to the Romans first. Yeah. And the book of Romans symbolized Paul's development of his theology to its highest point. Right. And if God would have allowed Paul to go to Rome when he wanted to go, we would have been without the book of Romans. Okay. So not only did God allow Paul to later to go to Rome, but he also did exceedingly above all we can ask or think because Paul got to Rome yeah. and we got the book of Romans. All right. Well, it flew over your head because this is a doctrinal sermon. Uh, but, but lest I hold you too long, there's something else. According to the power that work within us, he, we looked at first the unlimited ability, but now let's look at an undeniable ally. According to the power that work within us. Now, it's possible for a dying man to hear about a great work of a doctor or a surgeon who lives on the other side of the world. But the knowledge that there's a great surgeon on the other side of the world is of little use to a dying man if his circumstances prevent him from getting to where the doctor is. All right. People may hear about the gracious power of the great physician mm -hmm. who resides in heaven. But if a sinner does not have access to the power of the Savior, mm -hmm. the information of a Savior that lives to serve him is of no use. Yes, now, the good news about the gospel is this, that the Savior came from heaven down. He died and then rose again and then ascended back to heaven. Now, he sent his presence back in the power and person of the Holy Spirit. All right. And the Holy Spirit now lives within those of us who have received Christ right. as our personal Lord and Savior. That's right. And if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have all 
of the Holy Spirit you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tarry. You don't have to speak in tongue to be saved. You don't have to form at the mouth. Yeah. You don't have to crawl down the aisle. Yeah. When you receive Jesus, all the spirit that you're going to get comes into your life at the same time. Yeah. Yes, sir. However, you need to understand that the Holy Spirit can be resident and not president. Well, all right. Cool. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, I could not speak to you as spirits, but under carnal, even as babes. He's saying, you're saved, you're in Christ, but you're still a baby. One of the reasons, that's one of the reasons you throw temper tantrums when you don't get to be the president of the ministry. Uh, you throw temper tantrums when you don't get your way. Uh, that's why people wallow in sin and sickness and envy and strife because you acted like you act when you were in the world. And Paul said you don't have to do all that because there lives within you the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And so while the Holy Spirit indwells you yeah. when you're converted, you need to pray that he fills you on an ongoing basis so you can live a spirit-filled life. Hey, all right. Hey, you with your bad temper. You don't have to stay like that. Hey, you with that needle in your arm. You don't have to stay like that. How about you with your bad and ugly habits? You don't have to stay like that. Well, what about you with your obsession and thrill of fitting off cocaine and heroin? Well, you don't have to die all alone in a dark alley. What about you? Yeah, you who are trying to anesthetize your mind with alcohol. Don't say you can't help it. Yes, it might be difficult. And the reason you can make it is because you have power living within you. It's called dunamis. Well, what is dunamis? Dunamis is the unequal, unlimited power of God. Dunamis is the same power that God used to create the world. Dunamis is the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. Therefore, if you've got that power in you, you have the power to overcome whatever's holding you in a life of carnality. Look at what this power did. It took a cursing, cowardly fisherman named Simon Peter. This power transformed him into a peerless preacher on the day of Pentecost. Look at what this power can do. It took Saul of Tarsus, a mean and cruel persecutor of the infant church, and converted him and made him the apostle Paul. Look at what this power can do. Took the Lord's fair, sick, old, unbelieving brother James and converted his heart and made him a pillar of the church in Jerusalem. He stayed on his knees so much that they called him camel knees. That's right. That there's somebody here who can testify that you, you might say, I looked at my hands and they look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. I started a walk and had a new walk. I started to sing and had a new song. Well, what happened to you? And no doubt you say, I was changed. I was transformed. I was made new by the power of the Holy Spirit. Stories told of a man who was trying to cross a wide river of ice. And when he was afraid, because he thought at any moment that the ice would break and that he would fall to his death between the crushed ice. So in order to get across, in fear and trembling, he got down on his hands and knees and started to crawl in much terror across the river of ice. Mm -hmm. Just before he got to the other side, another man went right by him, nonchalantly, sitting on a sled, carrying a heavy load of iron. The man looked and wondered how this man got across this river of ice, not crawling, but riding on a sled, loaded down with iron. And I want you to know that this is the scenario that many people are trying to do today. Mm. Trying to get to heaven. They painstakingly crawl on their hands and knees. Wow. Afraid that at any moment the promises of God are going to break beneath them. Well. They go through life fearful and scared to death. That they're going to lose their salvation. No. Or that God is going to reject them because they've been so bad. No. So they think that the ice will break beneath their feet. Somebody tell you today that the Lord is strong enough to handle sleds going down uh, uh, rivers, frozen rivers, uh, horse included. He can surely handle whatever your heavy burden is. So there is working within us, not my power, 
but the power of God, his power working within us. Right. Verse 21 says, Unto him be glory in the church That's by right. Christ Jesus That's right. That's throughout right. all ages, world without end. Finally, we've seen an unlimited ability. We've discussed an undeniable ally. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we see an unending anthem. He says, Unto him be glory and in the church by Christ Jesus mm -hmm. throughout all ages, world without end. Let's see what Paul is talking about and we'll be through. What Paul does is he, he runs on to the end of time and he describes the fulfillment of God's dream. Now to be reminded of what God's dream is, you have to go back to chapter 1 of this book in verse 4. Mm -hmm. And there it talks about how God has chosen us that before the foundation of the world was laid, his purpose was to present himself a people without blemish, holy, acceptable to him in love. So Paul started out in chapter 1 saying that this is what God's plan is. Mm -hmm. But now the conclusion of chapter 3, Paul runs on to the end of time. He says God will complete his plan. When the church of Christ comes to its full fruition, when the church and all of its righteousness has been raptured and all of its glory, we'll be able to give God glory throughout the end, the ages. But then he said that our lives are to give glory to God personally, we ought to give glory to God publicly. We ought to give glory to God perpetually. All right. And it's all in that verse when he says, Unto him be glory. Yeah. Every child of God is responsible for personally praising God. One right. reason we're talking about praise, and I'm glad the choir was dealing with praise today. Amen. Uh, during the offering, uh, praise. And we want to make sure that we praise him in everything we do. Yes. Uh, I praise him because of his great love for me. Yeah. I praise him because his love was so great, he took my place. Amen. I praise him because his love reached down and picked me up. Yes, sir. His love caused him to die on an old rugged cross. Yes, his love called him to be buried in a borrowed tomb. Yes. His love caused him to stay in the grave for three days. But early Sunday morning, that same love caused him to get up with all power in his hand. Yes, sir. And soon one day that same love will what? cause him to return to get those of us who are his children Amen. to live forever with him. Yes. Yeah. The psalmist says, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Uh -huh. yes. Praise him in the heights. Yeah. Praise him all his angels. Uh -huh. Praise him all his hosts. Yes, sir. Praise him sun, moon. Praise him all ye stars of light. Yeah. Praise him ye heavens of heavens. Yeah. And ye waters that be above the heavens. Uh -huh. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Yes, Let them praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Let them praise the name of the yeah. Lord. Because he's worthy to be praised. Yeah. William Murphy says it best. When he says praise is what I, I do. Yeah. When I want to be close to you. Yeah. I lift my hands in praise. Amen. Praise is who I am. I'll praise you wow. while I can. Yeah. I'll bless you at all times. Uh -huh. I vow to praise you yeah. for the good and the bad. Yeah. I'll praise you yeah. whether yeah. happy or sad. Yeah. I'll praise you uh -huh. because Stand a chance, my praise. I wage the bad. I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I praise you whether happy or sad. I praise you in all that I go through. Tell me. 
pastor song. Shall we stand? It might be somebody else.
children to praise you. Thank you for the one that has come. Ask that you bless her, touch her, help her to be encouraged through our ministry to her life. And we thank you for these that are here as we leave this place without your presence and then return tonight that you be with us. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God as we commune on the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now forever. Shall we all say amen? Amen. Draw me near.